Okay. Okay, I'll send the link here. And then when I get it, I'll uh I'll end the Skype call and I'll join the hangout. All right. Okay, so you said it? Yeah. All right. Let me go to my email. Did you send it to my email? Yeah, I did. Okay. Let's just take a minute to get here. I don't have the fastest internet in the world, so. I don't know why that camera thing is not coming on. Maybe if maybe I have to end the Skype call. Yeah, I think so. Okay, here it is. Yeah, here I'll end it real quick. Okay. Yeah, I got it now, so I'll end it. All right. There we go. All right. There you go. Okay. So now what you do here, just hit start broadcast if you want to do a test run real quick. I think it already is. Oh, did you hit start broadcast? Yeah. Let me, go to, let me get on my... Uh... Okay, yeah, it is. Let's see here. Channel. Yeah, yeah, we're live. Okay. This is how I watch the comments, by the way, because I can't do it on my computer. Okay. Okay. This is how I watch the comments, by the way, because I can't do it on my computer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just uh, what you want to do is on your end, you want to pause that video that you're stream that you're watching. And that way it won't play the video and we won't get back feed. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I had everybody out there. This is all new to me. So I'm trying to learn this. Yeah. I'm showing Brian how to do live streams. So he wants to, we're planning on doing one this Saturday. Wait, yep. wait, it's looking. So then if I want to play video, then how do I do that? Um, so what you want to do is you'll see a little button that says screen share at the at the left corner, like a little green arrow, green and white arrow. Okay. You just hit that and hit screen share. It'll share your screen. And then you just go to YouTube and then, you know, whatever video you want to play. And that's how it works. Okay. Don't be too bad. I'll have to try that. I've done a number of these live stream things with you and, and Tim, but you know, I never did you know, had it actually done this like hosted or whatever. Right. It's different when you host it. <laughs> yeah. So but you know, I'll just I'll say this, I'll share this with all other and everybody else. Um you know this this Methodist thing is really kind of me, and and I really have been very 
promotional Methodist, and uh, I don't know. My uh, real Bible version issue exposed. I, I called a number of people, you know, heroes <laughs> in the faith. And now I'm kind of thinking, yeah, they want. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's pretty bad. I mean, Methodists are pretty bad stuff, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. I've been looking at the whole thing. A lot of them actually, they actually denounce or actually don't believe in the atonement of Jesus Christ. They believe that imputed righteousness is a myth. It's crazy. And that's, yeah, that's satanic. That's what Catholics believe. Yeah. Huh. Um, see here somebody had a question real quick i figured i'd answer it I figured we could answer it can y'all can you all just talk about what's at hand why bring up all this um well basically um i guess we're going to be doing the video on the dispensationalism on saturday uh that what was that guy's name i can't think of his name though oh um one of steven anderson's cult followers or whatever one of his cult ringers yeah yeah, yeah. That guy. Oh. Oh. yeah, what's so, yeah, that's what I do on that whole thing too is I really don't feel like showing all the stuff of attacking Ruckman's personal life and whatever else. You know, Ruckman was a sinner. We're, we're saved sinners. Uh, if you want to dig up dirt on us and whatever else to try to disprove doctrine, well, yeah, that's pretty lousy in my opinion um you know ruckman didn't invent uh dispensational teaching you know so i, I just don't feel like we a whole lot of time on that you know the the whole thing of going you know playing it and whatever else i haven't even seen the video that you know that that's a lot of the video right yeah i haven't seen it either i just glanced at it you know but um, I guess mainly we'll just go over the the anti dispensational stuff, pretty much. Yeah, we'll have to look at it and things. Um, answer a question over here, real quick. Where do you get the posters behind you? Um, this one behind me here, the Second Corinthians five uh, seventeen. That's from Bible Baptist Bookstore. So, yeah, contrary there. Thank you. Put that in there. What about the Free Presbyterian Church in Northern Ireland? Um, don't really know much about it. I know Eon Paisley was involved with that. I heard he was, you know, good for a while, but then he kind of backpedaled a little bit with the Catholics. I think so. What is your thoughts on Benedict Rice resigning? I guess that means uh, Pope Benedict. I didn't even know about that. I didn't either. Hmm. Is is the book on Charles Spurgeon, Spurgeon worth to buy? Uh, well. Spurgeon, I mean, you know, I believe he was saved, but, you know, he did have some problems. Mm -hmm. You know, I do, I do disagree with him on a lot of things, but I consider him, as far as I know, I really haven't fully looked into him, you know, like I did the Methodist. As far as I know, he wasn't a Methodist, so. No. It, there's a really yeah. old picture of Spurgeon, and he's got his hand in his, you know, vest thing, and somebody sent it to me and said, what do you think about this? You know, and, and it was a mason and whatever. I don't know. I, I haven't been able to prove one way or the other, honestly. Um, what about the gap theory? Um, to me, it just sounds like a diverse and strange doctrine. I don't really get into that. Yeah, I agree with that. It's kind of a compromise to evolution. Yeah. How would you answer a preacher that says Jesus is only coming twice? He's a, he is against the catching away. Well, uh, I don't really understand what he's saying here. I guess he's saying that, 
well, Jesus is not coming. You know, he's coming once. He came once in, on the earth, you know, in flesh, and then he's going to come again, the second coming. The rapture is not a literal coming. He's, right, I mean, he's not touching down on the earth. Yep. Absolutely. Tim in the comments is like, Yarg, it's working. Uh, yeah, that, the um, thing of Charles Spurgeon there, um, that he he definitely did, you know, kind of recommend the revised version later on, I think, in his ministry. So um, there was a question up here. Um, authorized KJV 1611 says, Brian, have you thought of doing a video about James from ex-Catholics? He said about excommunication on Trinity, Trinity deniers. And he changed his video title. Excommunicated is, excommunicated is Catholic. I think he is still. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, the whole thing of, of James Patel um, coming out with all this stuff on the Trinity, you know, it, it's just upsetting is the whole thing. And, and, you know, I don't, I don't know what to think about James, quite frankly. I'm just, you know, there's a lot of people that I just, just stick them in a imaginary folder with a question mark on it. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I mean, if he started, if he started compromising the gospel, then you know, that's one yeah. thing. Well, he's the only thing is, I mean, yeah, I agree with that. But the, the whole thing is, though, he's. He's saying that you have to believe in the Trinity to be saved. So, uh, in, in a I sense, it is, it is kind of he's messing around with the gospel, you know. So, I don't know. I don't yeah, know what to say yeah. about him. You know, I right now I, I have enough people to go after and things to do. So I'm just going to kind of leave James to himself. Whatever. <laughs> Let's see. Is Anderson gay? Uh, you, you mean happy though? But <laughs> then he might be a closet one. Yeah. Usually he's not very happy. So. I don't know. <laughs> uh, what are some books you'd recommend by Peter Ruckman? He's thinking about buying Errors in the King James Bible. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, you know, a lot of Ruckman stuff is good. Just, you know, the Bible's your standard, not Peter Ruckman. Or anybody else. Keep that in mind. Uh, okay. Uh, gap theory, a compromise to evolution. Second Peter chapter three clear states there was a first earth. Uh, yeah, we're on the first earth right now, by the way. Rotman, Donovan, Peacock all teach the gap theory. Please explain why you said that. Because, uh, I mean, it's kind of a pointless. It's a pointless argument, really. It's a waste of time, in my opinion. Yep. Yep. I had a, a friend of, the, of mine back years ago, Jesse Dulesky, and um, he did a whole big study on the whole gap theory thing. And at the time, I just kind of said, well, you know, that's, that's up to you, brother. I'm not going to get involved in all that stuff because it's just, you know, you get into ministry, you can't take on everything. You can't just, no. you know, I'm just going to speak on everything and be an expert on everything. You, you can't. I mean, there's just, I, I never, I don't know if I ever told this before, but I actually wanted to um, play a uh, banjo. I thought it'd be great to be able to learn how to play banjo. And I bought one and things and, and it was just, I tried a couple of times and I just finally thought, okay, this is a talent the Lord's not going to ever give me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never gonna. Learn. I have no musical ability in terms of playing instruments, so I just I stopped, you know. And, right. and like that was some issues on the Bible, you know, in in the Bible, the realm of scripture and whatever else. You know, you get into the Hebrew language and things, and some of the neat things about the Hebrew language, which I I do believe I actually saw a Jewish rabbi years ago, um, and he said that that he believes that all languages are jumbled up Hebrew that Hebrew was the original language and everything else the Tower of Babel the languages were confounded and you know it's all just you can find little bits of Hebrew in each, in each language I think he's probably right on that but to try and study that and get into the, all the Hebrew stuff and whatever else nah no nope. I'm just not gonna spend my time on that there's so much else to do 
Uh, will you be doing the music study? I guess he's asking about the uh, the music study that we're going to be doing one week when we get everybody together. I didn't even know about that. No, you didn't. Yeah, we're planning on doing a. Uh, I thought I told you, but I guess I didn't. yeah, we're having you know Devil and his music live stream at some point. Okay. So I was. I don't know if you want to be a part of that one or not. It's hard to say. You know, we can't really play the music because of copyright issues and all that junk on YouTube. But you know. Yep. Um, I'm just trying to see here. Uh, can I do a study on the God of the Testament? Well, I already kind of did. It was called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not the Trinity. So you can look that one up. Um, uh, um, someone had another question here. Let's see. Why has he ever steal? How about that one? <laughs> uh, well, actually a pretty simple answer to that one. My dad worked at a hardware store and they sold Husqvarna chainsaws and he got a really good discount on Husqvarna chainsaws. So that was it. I actually uh, actually like uh, Husqvarna uh, dirt bikes. So Yeah, I used to have one. Uh, it was an old one. It was a 1980 something 250 Husqvarna. And the thing had just been beat to death. I mean, it was in pretty bad shape. The rear bearing was going out in the rear wheel. So the, the wheel kind of went like this a little bit. Right. <laughs> and, uh, the kickstart kept falling off. But the thing was just really fast. Oh, bike. But anyways. Um, yeah. What about Apologia Radio? Can you share your opinion on them? They minister out side abortion clinics uh, is that the uh, Jeff Durbin I think I think is his name I think uh, studios I think not sure what thanks for your input what are your thoughts on Ray Comfort he's a heretic let me just put it right here you know I used to think he was an alright guy but I mean his gospel message is so confusing he basically says that Repentance means to stop sinning, you know, and then he'll say well see you're a sinner, but you still need Jesus Christ's sacrifice So he blends some truth with lies, you know, and it's just it's just he uses new versions too And you know, he's, he wrote his own King James Bible. I take some yeah. big issues with that Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that um, Yeah, that they said that. yeah, it's Jeff Durbin. Yeah, I don't think too much of that the whole apology of studios thing He's a Calvinist on the new version and you know get get christian tattoos and the whole thing and drink you know i'm not i'm not you know i i will say this publicly um and that is that my opinions on uh on uh, wine have changed i'm not going to say alcohol because i think that there are some sorts some types of alcohol that are just very high alcohol content and it's going to get you drunk really quickly mm -hmm. but, um Wine is just fermented you know, grape. Uh, would you call it grape juice, brother? Uh, well, it's not grape juice because grape juice wasn't invented until the 1800s. Um, it just comes from these grapes that are in the vineyard, and grapes on wine from wine are not actually like grapes you buy in a store, like table grapes. You know, mm -hmm. they're more complex, more unique, and they're not they're not the same thing. Don't get the two confused. Um, they're just basically more like a berry than an actual grape. If you look at them, they're round, whereas a, a table grape is oval, more of an oval shape, like an egg. Mm -hmm. So, um, yep. yeah. But, you know, yeah. I just want to say that you know, I'm not going to rip on, I mean, there's people in other countries that drink, you know, alcohol, whether it be it beer or wine or whatever, in very, very small amounts, not to get drunk, you know, and whatever else. And, you know, I used to have a very, very conservative home and it was alcohol for any reason at all is just of the devil you know kind of thing and yeah i don't, I don't believe that way anymore um you know drunkenness is wicked and of the devil certainly but mm -hmm. say just to condemn condemn all alcohol eh, it, it's it, you know when you have personal feelings and things you know that's okay in some ways but you have to make it line up with scripture 
Otherwise, your personal feelings don't supersede scripture. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what was another question here I saw? Oh, could do a video on Geno Jennings. You know, I'd actually like to do that sometime. I used to. Did you ever see Geno Jennings, Brother Jeremy? I have not. Well, who's that? He's a black preacher. The Their church is called the Church of the Apostles Creed. And the guy is just the most prideful, arrogant. Oh, my word, the guy's a jerk. And he just thinks he's just so right, just cocky in the way he looks at the screen. And that's right. Preach it. You know, all this stuff. <laughs> I mean, the guy just, oh. And basically, he, he believes in Acts 2.38 for salvation. Um, uh, I forget what all the other stuff is. Um, but he doesn't. He believes that Jesus um, is a created being. You know, he's a heretic, prideful heretic. Uh, let me say this, too. When I was younger, I used to be part of the Church of Christ thing. And we'll tell you firsthand, that baptismal regeneration stuff does not work. It's not the right gospel. Okay, because immediately right after that whole thing happened with me, I actually have my certificate from the Church of Christ, Campbellites or Water Dogs, whatever you want to call them. You know, I actually have my certificate. It says I was born again in 2007, okay, from being baptized. And guess what happened? Very next week later, I was going out living like the devil, you know. So mm -hmm. the whole baptism regeneration thing is a scam. Yeah. Um question up there about uh satanism and video games yeah there's you know i stopped playing video games many years ago but you know i was into warcraft and and um a lot of other games like that you know fantasy role-playing type of stuff and it was just filled with you know there was one uh, final fantasy 7 i remember and it was filled with spell casting and just i mean uh just all kinds of wickedness and you could invoke isis and and you know i mean it was Oh, wow. It was bad. I remember that. I used to love that game, but, you know, got saved and, you know, and it just, whoa, this thing is filled with occultism. Um, so another question here from Natasha. Hi, Brian. Can you please discuss circumcision for Christians today who have baby boys? No, it's not required for us today, but I'm curious. Should it just be personal preference of the parents? I would say yes to that. Um, the, the problem with circumcision is that um, unless you have somebody that really knows what they're doing, uh, you know, it can get, it can get messed up. And, and, um, and I was actually the victim of a, of a bad circumcision when I was a little baby. I didn't even know it, but, um, my mother was telling me that the one time she said that the doctor basically cut wrong or whatever else. And, and, you know, I had to go back in and it was it was a bad situation. And, you know, I guess when I would urinate as a baby, I would really scream and cry because, you know, I'd been, you know, cut wrong or whatever. And, and then actually one of my nephews, the same thing happened. The doctor botched the uh, circumcision. So, um, you know, with our son, we just said, no, not going to happen because uh, it's just you're not required to um, as a as a Christian. There's nothing in the New Testament where you're required to circumcise a child. So, um, um, got a question here that we missed up top. It says, Brian, do you believe that there are modern day prophets within the body of Christ? No, no, <laughs> no, uh, it's, it's not needed because we have the Bible. Yeah. You know, and, and the thing is, these false prophets, usually it's charismatics that do this. They will usually use the uh, verses and where Paul talks about where there's prophesying, you know, yada, yada, yada. They'll use that to try to say, see, there's prophets today. Uh, no, do you realize when you read the Bible, you're actually reading prophecy? <laughs> you know, yeah. knowing the word of God is knowing prophecy. You know, so that doesn't work. And plus, prophets were for the Jews anyway. I mean... There was no need for them for Gentiles. We don't seek after signs. And that's mainly what prophets were doing. Yeah. Yep. And the prophets, too, were there. Prophecy, the original gift of it was given for the Jews. The Jews required yeah. sign. So, um, Brother Brian, I remember you doing a video with Joshua Alvarez. I'm just curious your thoughts about him and how he seems to offend quite a few people lately. Um I, I wanted to encourage him back way back when in 
you know, as a young man that seemed to be for, for the Lord. And, and I, so I agreed to do the interview. Um, in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, I should have asked him. You know, I mean, he, he seemed legitimate and, um, you know, and he, when I met him, he was very nice and polite, whatever else. I didn't see a lot of the, you know, arrogance that he's definitely shown, um, since then. And so, you know, it's, it's the story of this ministry over the years, you know, just I've, I've, you know, given my endorsement to different people and all of a sudden, you know, whoop, you know, I just do this flip and I think, Oh, great. Yeah. So yeah, he's, he's definitely shown, you know, not just immaturity levels there, but you know, lost, I believe he's lost. And yeah. which is bad. It really is. Yeah. I mean, I personally have experience with Josh Alvarez. Um, you know, he basically copies Ruckman's material to a T. Doesn't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ himself. He just goes off of everything Ruckman does and he twists a lot of what Ruckman says. And then he comes, he makes up his own doctrine pretty much. You know, the guy has a lot of heresies. He believes that sex is marriage. He believes that Christians can be devil possessed. He believes a Christian has 13 years of living sin before God kills him. I mean, mm -hmm. come on, show me that stuff in scripture. Give me a break, you know. And then he says fornication is not premarital sex. I mean, the guy is trying to justify, you know, fornication pretty much. You know, he's wicked. And, you know, I've, I've rebuked him on the whole sex is marriage thing a long time ago. He just flat out was just attacking me, just, you know, coming after me. And then when I try to leave him alone, try to get away from him, he just like pulled me back in and tried to attack me some more. And then he went after my wife. So no, Josh Alvarez is a wicked little devil. And I've warned many times about young kids getting into ministry early. Be really careful about that. Because you can fall into the snare of the devil doing that. You know, that's why it says not don't be a novice, at least you'd be lifted up with pride and fall into the condemnation of the devil. So yeah. Yep. Answer a few more questions here. Hi, Brian. What do you think of Steven Anderson's video on Dr. James White's book, The King James Only? I think you mean controversy there. I haven't really watched them, honestly. I don't really trust Anderson very much. Um, where's my bookshelf? Oh, right there. <laughs> That's part of it. Uh, I, I took it down because we're trying to transition down closer to our property. We're still looking for a, a new office. Um, where we can set things up much better. Um, thoughts on Nestorius? I have no idea what Nestorius is. I've never heard of that either. No idea. Um, did I sell my guns? Uh, Rogue Vet 79. Um, sure, send them all here. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, don't sell your guns. Absolutely not. No. Uh, you know, and I'll just say this because uh, I don't I've made some statements about, you know, the thing of pacifism versus gun ownership. Um, you know, I think uh, I think it's very important to have means of protection like that. And you can say, well, the Lord can protect you. Yeah, he can. But, uh, you know, he told his disciples to buy a sword. Luke chapter 22. So I think, you know, there's not a problem with having firearms. I've been a gun owner. Gun owner yeah. Gun owner all my life. Um, where is the word jerk in scripture? Uh, it's not, <laughs> as far as I know. Um, so, just part of uh, my vocabulary, you know. <laughs> I, I mean, it's you know, okay, you know, they they used, you know, I mean, the Apostle Paul called Christians evil beasts. I mean, he mm -hmm. talked about a racist statement. I mean, you know, some of the stuff, the language that was used in the Bible would be considered hate speech today. Uh, you know, yeah. and when I call people jerks or whatever else, that doesn't mean that I just hate people and I'd like to just see them dead and whatever. No, it's not like that. You know, I, I do care about people and I'd like to see people get saved. But if I see somebody that's, you know, purposefully deceiving somebody or whatever, or just being a jerk, being mean spirited, I guess would be the Bible way to say it. I'm gonna say that. I believe in plain speech. So absolutely. Yeah. I mean I get corrected that about that all the time. They're like, where is these words at in the Bible that you use? Where is mental illness Monday in the Bible, you know, and all this stuff? I'm just like, 
I do mental illness Mondays to show everybody the times we live in. That's the reason why I do those videos. You know, I show everybody, I get collections of screenshots from social media. There's out there that this is that the apostasy is getting worse and worse. That's the reason why I do it. You know, you know people just like to make a big deal about nothing. It seems like. Yeah. Yep. Um, Ryan Fraser, oh. Thorius. 386 to 452 AD rejected a, a third council of Nicaea. He rejected Mary as God bearer saying Jesus was both man and word. Um, yeah, I don't really know much about the church fathers. I don't really have, I haven't really studied them that much. I've read a little bit about them, but you know, not, I do uh, know that Justin Martyr was a Catholic. So, uh, where's that one? Uh, part of the deal on that. Yeah, I said saw I saw something about exorcism. Yeah, I do have a video on exorcism. I go over the whole thing of uh oh, what's that guy's name? Oh, that guy, he's a famous exorcist. I can't think of his name. It'll come to me eventually. <laughs> Bob Larson. Uh, Bob Larson. Yeah, Bob Larson. Yeah. Uh, somebody had a question about Ephesians 4.11, and it says, He gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and some teachers for perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. See, well, this is something typical a charismatic will do. They'll see right, they'll go right here and say, see, it says apostles and prophets. It means there's apostles and prophets today. No, it doesn't. Okay. Um, again, it says apostles were first, you know, obviously. And prophets today would be somebody that can understand the Bible really well. All right. Mm -hmm. That would be somebody that would be considered a prophet today. You know, the Bible is called a more sure word of prophecy. We do not have prophets speaking about future events that are not in the Bible. Um, that would be a private interpretation, you know. So we don't have that going on today. Um, God's not going to do anything that's contrary to his word. Right. Uh, how do tribulation saints fit in the first resurrection? Uh, the first resurrection is over at the end of the millennial kingdom. Um, and it's multiple parts to it. You know, you have a real problem if you say that the first resurrection is, you know, when dead saints come up because uh, the Bible clearly says, you know, that you're going to rule and reign with Christ if you suffer with him. In Second Timothy chapter two, so you know, can't rule and reign too good if you're dead and you know, waiting to be resurrected. Yeah. Uh, pre time of Jacob's trouble, catching away before or after Gog and Magog, um, the Gog and Magog war and all that stuff. I'm, I'm, I will confess to being quite stupid on that. Uh, oh, Gog and Magog. Well, the only time I know of it really being spoke about in the New Testament is at the end of the Millennium Kingdom when they're going out on the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them to gather them together to battle. The number of them is in the sand of the sea. That's at the end of the Millennium Kingdom. Yeah, you're right about yeah. that. Yeah, you know, thinking about it. <laughs> Um, can you show your dog? Um, no, she's downstairs. Yeah, she'll she'll be in upcoming videos probably. But uh, um, sissy is not in there either. Big deal about nothing. What's righteous about talking people talking about people like that? Uh, but then you have a problem with Jesus Christ. I mean, again, I don't understand this this issue about calling people names. You know, weird. Yep. Um, no, I, I, no, there's. A, did did I see your comment question on gifts? No, I didn't. I'm sorry about that. Um, could you retype it or? Uh, well, these comments are coming up pretty quick. <laughs> I can't yeah, they are. <laughs> uh, do we need health insurance? No, I, I would say no to that. Yeah, I agree. Uh, the medical that. establishment is crooked. It's corrupt. The pharmaceutical industry, pharmaceutical pills are made completely 100% with toxic uh, chemicals. 
and they'll say, well, no, that's not true because penicillin. They use synthetic penicillin, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Anybody tells you that pharmaceutical drugs are good for you, they're lying. They don't know what they're talking about. And that's what they're going to try to get you on because doctors get kickbacks from the big pharma. I don't know much about Lee Strobel, honestly. What about car insurance? It's illegal to drive without insurance. Yeah, you know, I understand that. You know, again, I'm not going to be super dogmatic about it. You know, I'm not going to disfellowship with somebody because they have uh, health insurance or something like that. And, yeah, I understand no. about the car insurance. I understand that. You know, uh, I have car insurance. Okay, um, if people want to take that and, and mean it, make it in. I'm a Catholic or, or not Catholic. I'm a hypocrite. Um, you know, well, whatever. I just think that if you can get away from health insurance, you know, it's better to do that. Um, throw me a wrench, Brian. Well, I can't really do that. <laughs> Do I believe Donnie Romero can be restored? No, I believe Donnie Romero can get saved. Yeah. Um, he's not a Christian. He preaches a very false, wicked gospel, and that's why he got into the trouble that he did. Because he was never born again. Uh, what happened to your motive vlogs? Um, well, it's a little cold for that right now. I was actually going to do one in the snow. But um, we've been getting some big snows up here, and that keeps me very busy. Uh, Brother, you did a video. Satan runs a, runs hell. God does doesn't run hell. God does. And we read the verse in Hebrews how you, you can lose your salvation. You said that verse is in the time of Jacob's trouble, but it applies today. Well, I'll just say this: uh, Hebrews is written to who the Hebrews mm -hmm. okay we're not Hebrews we're Gentile believers um, and don't try to go use a verse Galatians 328 where it says that you know there's neither Jew nor Greek or neither bond nor free there's neither male nor female that's not talking about race okay it's talking about everybody in Christ is one okay doesn't mean we lost our gender identity or we lost our uh, you know or <laughs> race identity or whatever right um, now, Hebrews is written to Hebrews for a reason. There's not one mention of anybody in the book of Hebrews. I mean, show me anywhere in there where it says, in Christ Jesus. You won't find it. Okay? The people that are part of the body of Christ are in Christ Jesus. Hebrews never mentions of the sort. So, don't even try to use Hebrews to prove you can lose your salvation. Because you can't. Yep. Agreed. Um, Jesus is the Lord. Brother Brian, you need to plant elderberry if you can. It's super beneficial. We actually have... It growing wild on our property. Um, we actually have it's kind of weird up here in northern Maine. We have both like the black slash blue elderberry, and then we also have red elderberries, which are <clears throat> I looked it up and, and you, they are edible, but they're you don't want to eat the seeds because it can really mess you up. So I pretty much just avoid them. I don't mess with them. Uh, <laughs> slowly his lips move a complete reptile, or it could be live streaming too. You know, yeah, we're reptilians, brother. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, you listen to David Ike too much. Uh, why did I move to Maine instead of moving down south? Uh, well, quite frankly, because I can't stand heat. Um, we love the uh, the northern temperatures. <laughs> I can't believe somebody, believe somebody actually tried to say that. And by the way, as far as land is being cheap, we can you can buy land up here for two to three hundred dollars an acre. So wow. land is really cheap here. Um, dark familiarity, Brian. Can you tell me how to get born again as a Christian? I've been in the New Age and I'm trying to come out of it. Well, um, there's a there's a very big requirement for salvation, and that is. Uh, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If you can admit to being a sinner, uh, 
you've lied, you've stolen, you've, you know, uh, whatever you God's name in vain, you've, you've lusted, you've been involved with pornography, you've been in, in you know, drugs, uh, drunkenness, whatever. Um, read the Bible and you can see what God classifies as sin. And if you can look at that and say, yeah, I've done those things. I know that I, I can't be good enough to get to heaven on my own. There's no way I'm making it in by my own good works or whatever else. Uh, then you can be saved. And if you can't come to that point and say, well, I'm not really that bad, then you can't be saved. It's just as simple as that. And if you can say, yeah, I'm a sinner, then uh, call upon the name of the Lord. Uh, just pray and, and ask God to say, God, I, I need to be saved. I can't make it in on my own. Please save me. I don't want to go to hell when I die. I, 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 I want to get saved. And um, and it's not going to be a, just an instant boom change and everything. You become sinless and your whole life just is fixed and you never think any bad thoughts again or whatever else. No, but you will feel a definite change and you will feel a really strong desire for truth. And you're just going to love truth and you're going to see people around you starting to change <laughs> for the worse. They're not going to like you as much as they used to. And, um, you know, you'll just have a, and it won't even matter to you anymore. You won't care about the world. You won't care about lost friends and family in terms of getting along with them. You'll have a burden for them actually to, to get saved. Um, so you can watch our salvation message on this channel. It'll take you through all the scriptures and show you how to be saved from the King James Bible. So that's how I would answer that. Um, Son of Thunder says, the locusts in Revelation, are they depicting what people call aliens? Look like what people say that they saw alien encounters. Okay, let me say something about the whole aliens thing. It's a bunch of nonsense. Don't fall into that whole thing. Uh, the whole devils being aliens thing, I think that's a lie too. Um, but as far as the locusts go, they are just... They're just devils. That's what they are. There's some sort of devilish creature that God's created, and He's going to let them out and to for His wrath in the seven years. I just believe they're just going to be part of what's of. Uh, they're part of God's wrath. That's it. They're not an alien of any kind. I don't know if I missed a comment there. I'm sorry for my other comments. It's it's just <laughs> Yeah, I mean I'm looking too and I'm just I'm not seeing them all either. I'm just trying to make sure I see them all. Yeah. Um what about the Ten Commandments? Well, uh the Ten Commandments in the Old Testament were originally for the for Israel because they have to keep the Sabbath day. Uh, Exodus 31 13 says the Sabbath day was for a sign between God and Israel. Okay. It was given to the Jews for a sign. Uh, we don't have to keep the Sabbath day today. We're not, we're not Jews. So our commandments are in Romans. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, Pastor Quick here says, I mean, gift of tongues, prophecy, healing, etc. As far as gifts for Christians today. Um, again, I, I have studies on that. Um, I do think that there is a gift of tongues in the sense of there are some people that can really learn foreign languages very, very well. Um, but the sign gift of being able to speak perfect Hebrew when there's Jews present, um, eh, I don't think that that's there. Prophecy, for sure, word of prophecy is the Bible. I don't have my Bible here with it. It's back there on the thing. <laughs> um, uh, healing. If it's actually interesting if you look, I think it's in First Corinthians chapter 12. It says gifts, plural, gifts of healing. And I think that there's definitely something to that. I think that there are people that are very good at natural health, um, herbal. And in natural health, there's so much that goes in with that, with nutrition, um, exercise, herbal remedies, um, essential oils. I mean, there, there's just so much within that. So you can have gifts, plural, of healing. But the thing of miraculous healing, laying your hands on somebody and instantaneously healing them, that was given as a sign gift to convert Jews. Um, do you think James White is saved? Uh, no. <laughs> Let me say it again. No. <laughs>
Yeah, I mean, anyone that rejects the word of God is not saved. I mean, that should be your first warning. Yeah. Uh, did the King James translators talk the way that the King James Bible reads? Um, uh, somewhat, they did a little bit back then, but mostly no. They they just they translated the King James Bible into proper biblical English. I say it that way. Um, um, is it okay to be a heart surgeon when you're saved? This is for you, Brian. Heart surgeon. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, you're going to have to go through a lot of training to get to that level of uh, the medical establishment. And, you know, yeah. again, you get into this stuff and, and what about somebody that has a heart, you know, that it needs a heart surgery or something? They, you know, I don't know. It's just to, to get into that whole thing of the medical establishment. And yeah. I would stay away from it. Can the devil masquerade as aliens to deceive? Uh, no, I wouldn't think so. I just think that's a bunch of, I think that's a sign out, really. You know, there's no scripture that talks about any of that. You know, and most of the, and most of the devils that are talked about in scripture are ministers of righteousness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, somebody wrote here, James White knows the gospel, but he's not obeying, right? Uh, no, he's he's rejecting scripture. Um, he's a hypocrite. He's a liar, a deceiver. He can say in one breath that the Bible is our authority. And you say, what Bible? Oh, there aren't any. You know, uh, all translations have errors and we should go with the Greek and the Hebrew, but we don't really have a perfect Greek and Hebrew that's final and should never be updated or whatever. You know, the Bible says being born again of uh, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Um, so somebody says, I don't believe in the Bible. Eh, sorry, not saved. Uh, what do you think of Calvinism? <laughs> what do I think of Calvinism? Yeah, um, go ahead. Did a whole video on that predestinated to not be a Calvinist. So I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Calvinism. There's so many scriptures that contradict it. it just, yeah. Calvinism is a bunch of, it's just a bag of rats, pretty much. I mean, it's, it makes God into a liar, pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you believe Bigfoot is real? Um, I don't know. I saw Gravedigger once at a, at a truck rally, but I don't know about Bigfoot. Never saw it in person. I saw um, it. <laughs> Um, there was actually a story here in northern Maine. Down there's a Baxter State Park, which is not too far from our new property. And uh, there was actually a, a story of, of uh, Boy Scouts that back in the 1960s or something, they were there, their whole troop of Boy Scouts, and they all saw this Bigfoot creature. So it's down in the woods, apparently near where I'm going to be, you know, we'll be living in the future. So if I ever see it, I'm going to drop one and I'll, I'll get a full body mount and the whole thing, and then we can prove it. So, um, Ahab says, I know Brother Brian believes in eternal security, and so do I, which is why that part of the video confused me. Oh, he's talking about the uh, Satan and hell thing. Um, well, see, here's the thing, man, is that in the in the time of Jacob's trouble, the seven years, if you take the mark, you go to hell. Okay, they don't have eternal security during that time period. Okay, they're having to work for their salvation. That's why you see in Revelation 14, uh, I think I believe it's 714 where it says they are washing their robes. Okay. They have to wash their robes. Okay. And the blood of Jesus Christ today, we are already washed. When we get saved, we become washed. There's a difference. So you can't reconcile the two together. There's no way. So people in that time period, you know, they're having to work for their salvation. That's why Jesus Christ said, he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. They have to endure to the end, you know, basically the end of their life. So, mm -hmm. uh, Um, here's a question quick. Please explain Jesus saying to the father why he left him, you know, fa father, father, why hast thou forsaken me? Uh, because the soul departed. Um, you know, again, you know, it's not that the God, the father's up in heaven is a separate man. And he just, I mean, it doesn't really make any sense. I mean, God, the father wasn't standing there beside the cross and then he left, you know, <laughs> uh, Jesus didn't look out of the crowd and say, father, father, why are you leaving? You know, 
Um, no, he's talking about the soul leaving. Um, uh, Chad Daniels, James White is one of the greatest apologists of today. To claim he is not saved because he doesn't agree on the Bible version is problematic. Um, well, God's word is magnified above his name. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a problem. And why are James White's books endorsed by Jesuits? And yeah. he's a Calvinist. So the guy's yeah. not an apologist. If, if he's an apologist, whatever that you know, whole stupid thing is. But the, uh, you need to check yourself, okay? James White is a stinking rotten heretic. And you know, yeah, uh, Mark Keenan down here says James got a tattoo recently, also, you know, worldly. Uh, yeah, as a, a tattoo, and he called it, uh, you know, uh, his mark of, you know, the, the his lordship or whatever, the lordship of Christ or something, you know. So whatever. Um, yeah, and and let me say something about the apologetics thing. The whole apologetics thing, the street preachers were big into this whole thing. What it is is they they go that by that verse in Peter where it says you have to give an answer to every man, and they they take that one verse and just run with it. And apologetics is basically having to answer everything. You know, you have to answer every question that comes along. No, you don't. The Bible doesn't teach such. Apologetics is very wicked. It's just debating. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. So I get, I would stay away from apologetics. It's not it's not the Lord. Yep. Good night. These comments are coming up so quick. I'm mm -hmm. getting a headache. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a test. You know, we weren't supposed to even have. No, I thank everybody out there for your questions and things and, and uh, just, you know, your kind words of encouragement. Really do appreciate that. Do you practice deliverance ministry? No. <laughs> I guess I'll tell you right now, no. I did deliver my son, though, so, you know, not quite the same <laughs> thing. I used to deliver furniture. Does that count? There you go. There you go. Hey, we're both involved in deliverance. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Amy's in there laughing. I can hear. <laughs> what do you think of the books, the chaos of the cults, and the kingdom of the cults? I have seen it in your bookshelf, and I want to ask you if you can make a video review on it, please. Uh, is that the stuff by Walter Martin? I think. I've heard of it. I just never knew what it was. Yeah. I think if it if it's the stuff about uh, from uh, Walter Martin, Walter Martin came out and made this big had a big hissy fit over jack chick and uh alberto rivera attacking the catholic church and um yeah you know eh, that's a problem <laughs> after the saint dies do we stand at the judgment seat of christ and then heaven no um we go to heaven and then we go to the judgment seat of christ it's going to be in the same place uh, god's throne is, is in heaven and i've if you ever seen my geocentricity study or whatever, I show where God's throne is, and that's where we're going to go at the judgment seat. So, and then He's going to try our works there. So, and the whole Hebrews nine twenty seven thing. Let me say this real quick. Basically, what that means is when you wake up after you die, you're either going to be in one of two places, heaven or hell. You know, so that's the judgment. You wake up in hell, and that's your judgment. You wake up in heaven, well, you're saved. You know, that's the, that's the judgment. Yep. What do you think of Lord of the Rings? I have a multiple part study on it, going through the whole thing, um, just to kind of give you a summation of it. Um, Lord of the Rings was uh, John Ronald Rule Tolkien was a real Catholic. Um, what I mean by that is he understood the ancient mystery Babylonian pagan nature of Roman Catholicism. And he basically put that into his own fictional work and uh, made a, a mirror image of what real Catholicism is all about. Him and C.S. Lewis, they were both high level occultists. Mm -hmm. What do I think of Robert Breaker? <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 My 
off. Be new here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not Robert a fan of Breaker. No. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Uh, He's monetized. Uh, he, he just steals people's information, you know, well, not information, I shouldn't say, but he, material. And, uh, he, yeah, you know, prayer is, is not necessary and all this other stuff. I mean, yeah. Who are the Nephilim in Genesis chapter 6? Well, the word Nephilim is not in the King James Bible. I can't speak for the other versions, but uh, the whole Nephilim theory thing came from uh, David Icke. So um, be really, really careful that whole Nephilim word. But giants were in the Old Testament. Okay, These giant men were, were uh, basically the sons of God were coming down and taking wives among themselves, and they were producing offspring that were really tall. And they were really clumsy and very stupid. So um, there were giants in the Old Testament. There weren't Nephilim. You know, Nephilim's a New Age terminology. Yep. Lewis was an atheist who supposedly became a Christian thanks to Tolkien, but he's a ch high church Anglican. Yeah, he he. Uh, you know, he. Oh man, there's so many things about. C.S. Lewis and Tolkien. I did a lot of research on both men. C.S. Lewis was also um, into some of the covert ops world and, and things. I did again. I did a video on that, but that's a whole other thing. Um, is having a testimony proof of salvation? Matthew chapter six, five through six, leads me to contrary. Uh, well, here's the thing. You know, if you're um, getting into ministry. I would say you would need testimony for sure. If I come across a channel that doesn't have a testimony, uh, I don't. I'm gonna question them because I don't even know how they got saved. You know. Mm -hmm. and, and plus, let me say this about Matthew five six chapter six whatever. Matthew five through seven, those books you can't apply that to Christians today. That's talking about the millennial kingdom. Those are like the I guess you would say like the constitution and how they're gonna live in the millennial kingdom. So you really can't use Matthew five through six or five through seven um, for Christians today. It doesn't work because uh, if you read Matthew chapter four, leading up to that point, Jesus is going about preaching the gospel of the kingdom, which is not our gospel today. Yep. Yeah. And the question was asked there. Why did Jesus say that the father is greater than he if they're one and the same? Well, a soul is greater than flesh. So. That's how I'd answer that. Uh, so they are saved by works. Yeah, yikes. No one can be saved by works. There's another gospel. I don't know who you're referring to there. <laughs> uh, this is going to be something else we do to the live stream thing on Saturday night. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll just make a disclaimer right from the beginning to say, look, question later. You know, we're just going to do the uh, study at the beginning, and then we'll do yeah. questions later. Yeah. It's fine, you know, to have some back and forth. That's fine. But, you know. Uh, right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I mean, <laughs> it's really hard to pay attention with that all going on over there. And plus, you've got an extra set of eyes, too. Huh? So. Mm hmm Uh, Eric John Phelps, I would say, is falling away from the truth. You know, I, I think he's saved. He's in my question box, just like, you know, Brian's question box, or whatever. You know, I just, I just pray for the guy because I followed him for years. I listened to him for a long time. Yeah. Okay, I can't see this guy's a problem. Apologetics is wicked. Uh, yeah, it's wicked. Okay, don't even try to talk to me about it. It's wicked. You don't want to give an answer to everybody. Okay, you answer somebody once, twice, then done. Okay, Titus chapter three verse ten. What Spanish Bible do I recommend? Well, I used to recommend the Reign of Valera, but I don't, I, I don't speak Spanish, so I don't really know. I can't really speak with authority on it. There's phones going off over here. Uh, yeah, 
I, I can't. Uh, uh, there's a, a Gomez Bible or something too. Spanish speaking brethren can help you with that one. I'm not. I'm not an expert on the Spanish Bible. Um, I uh, thing going off over here. <laughs> Got this weird thing. These this, some law firm keeps calling here asking for Elizabeth Parodies. Huh? Is somebody here named Elizabeth Parodies? What in the world? But advice for young men who drop out of school. Uh, well, if you're dropping out of school, it's a good thing because uh, most university education is going to, all it's going to do is give you a huge big debt that's going to take years to pay off. Um, I know very few people that went on to use their degrees, university degrees, to get a job. Um, you know, just as simple as that. I would say if you drop out of school, um, go find a some kind of a place that you can work with your hands, manual labor, I think is, is much safer than office work and whatever. Um, just my opinion on it. But that's something you have to pray about. Uh, I think he was talking about high school, brother. Oh, that could be a problem. high school. Yeah, I think he was. I think he was trying to talk about high school, dropping out of high school. Well, if you can do it, you know, like, again, I mean, my last couple of years of high school was just ridiculous. I just barely passed. I didn't even care. Yeah. Ridiculous. I didn't either. Yeah. You know, the last, my senior year of high school was 30 days because I just didn't care. Or some days I just didn't want to go. And they still passed me. I think they just wanted to get rid of me, really. <laughs> Israeli Defense Forces, stop pretending you have the word of God. My family did not perish in the Holocaust for nothing. Um, I want that comment. <laughs> okay. But we do have the whole Bible, by the way. The, the New Testament is not. Um, it, Hitler didn't use the New Testament. Okay. Hitler was a Roman Catholic. Roman Catholics don't use the New Testament. Um, if you're Jewish, you need to understand that we're your friends. We defend the nation of Israel. And I would have fought against Hitler and and, uh, and fought to save Jews from the Holocaust. Okay, don't confuse us with Roman Catholic replacement theology people, please. Oh, boy. Amen. Yeah. Amen to that. <sighs> Let's see here. What else we got? Thoughts on alchemy, manifestation, as well as the Kundalini awakening. We all have good and evil within us. Numerology tied to the occult, but also a huge part of scripture. Um, well, you know, Kundalini comes from the charismatic stuff, you know, and also it goes way back to even Hindu type stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, stay away from me and that kind of deal. It's just all, it's all wicked. Yep. As far as numerology is concerned, the Bible has a system of numbers, certainly. But you got to be careful that you know some people like John Wesley it was another thing he used to do, founder of the Methodist cult. He would actually open up a, the Bible and point to a verse, and then that would be what he would go with or whatever. And you can you know you can kind of use you know kind of get this weird occultism thing going you know doing things by the numbers of scripture and whatever. You guys got to be careful that. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me your thoughts on brother about brother David Daniels? Question two, or really just a statement? I love to see you and Christopher Pinto get together and do some work. I don't even know who that is, but uh, yeah, go and give your thoughts on David Daniels. Um, yeah, I, I I agree with most of what he does. I don't I don't care for some of the stuff that comes out of Chick Tracks. They came out with a tract a while back, which had a, a, a black Jesus in it, so as not to offend African-American people. But I consider that to be blasphemous. 
Um, just the same I would consider a blonde-haired, blue-eyed Jesus to be blasphemous. Jesus mm -hmm. wasn't healed. Okay, so th th there's some compromised stuff that happens with tech tracks, and they do the winged angels thing, which I disagree with heavily. Um, you know, so. Well, sodomites being in Christ's millennium, no. I was just going to tell you right now. No, they won't be. You know, and, and again, just just to say that, you know, this this whole sodomy thing, people don't understand it. Um, sodomy, the whole reason it's being pushed by the mainstream media and everything else is because it's it's a it's a way of eliminating people. Um, mm -hmm. you, if you're a sodomite, you are you basically sterilizing yourself, and mm -hmm. uh, you know. All sin is negative. Yeah. People need to get that. Yeah. And, you know, I, there's a there's something that, you know, I've been learning a lot lately in this this whole antichrist thing. And uh, that somehow the antichrist is a sodomite or whatever. I don't believe that at all. You know, I believe that I believe the antichrist himself will actually persecute sodomites because of what Roman Catholicism stands for. Like hardcore true Roman Catholicism is against sodomites. So yeah. I don't see how they, they're going to, how you can be a sodomite and be in power. Well, you know, yeah. one thing I will say though on that brother is, is that they, they are hypocrites with it. You know, they can stand against yes. sodomy, but then they're doing it behind the closed doors, you know, and I think right. high level occultism, they do practice ritual, satanic ritual abuse on young boys. So, right. I know what you're saying though. He's not going to be an open flaming, you know, wearing pink or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The moderators out there, you got your work cut out for you. There's a lot of trolls coming in here. Yeah, really. Troll hunting. <laughs> what if the rapture happens way before the tribulation starts? No man knows the day or hour because the rapture happens, then you won't know exactly will be seven years. This is still pretty true. Well, let me say this. I've always believed personally myself that I say we're going to be raptured. We're going to be caught up and there's probably going to be a time period in between when the tribulation actually starts. You know, I don't believe it. It can It cannot start like right away after the rapture. There's going to be a big cleanup process right after because all the chaos. You got to think though, when the rapture takes place, all the children are going to disappear under a certain age. You know, and I believe that age is like around 14, 13 years old. So all the children are that age are going to disappear. And you got to think about the chaos that's going to bring on this earth with all the parents and stuff, you know, just freaking out or whatever. And, and you think that you think, well, they freak out over television on Black Friday. What do you think they're going to do when their children disappear? How insane this world's going to go. It's going to take a while for them to clean up the mess after the rapture. Yep. And they got to rebuild the temple. You know, I don't yep. think that's going to be a real quick thing. You know, the temples definitely ha has to be there. It's part of the end times. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I live in Poland. How can I, where's the thing at? I live in Poland. How can I read KJV Bible and understand all? What about the rest of the, that stinking thing keeps going up. People who do not understand English at all. Well, understand that in the Old Testament, the Bible was in Hebrew, um, not in all the other languages. New Testament, it was primarily in Greek, um, some Aramaic, whatever else. But, you know, um, God doesn't have to have his word in every single language. Um, you know, complete Bible, I believe the very best one is the King James Bible. But certainly you can make a translation from it. You can use the Receptus, but compare you know the, the thing that made the king james bible different is it was not just we're just going to use greek and hebrew and that's it nothing they were using a lot of other ancient language translations so you know how to answer that read acts after read acts chapter two and obey <laughs> how about you obey the gospel and get saved you know yeah. like that throne resurrection not your water you know, why don't you just go pour some water over your head and say that's baptism? You might as well just do that because that's what you're doing. 
No, I, like I said, the whole baptism thing's a scam. I, I did it a long time ago. It doesn't save you. You know, give me a break. It's fake. Yep. Uh, let's see if there's anything else here. Yeah, I'm looking to make sure I didn't miss any. So the rapture happens and the tribulation starts. That's what I believe. I believe part of the, the, the great deception, you know, the strong delusion, not, not great deception, excuse me, the strong yeah. delusion that happens. Um, I believe a lot of it is actually um, that people are going to think when the rapture happens, they're going to think that there's they've kind of come through the tribulation. And then when Antichrist shows up, they're going to think it's Christ's second coming. Yeah. There, there, yeah, there could be a, there could be a gap there between those events. Right. Oh, and let me say this too, to add to your point, because uh, a lot of people nowadays are watering down the time of Jacob's trouble as well, and they're trying to say the tribulation is really not going to be that bad after all. So that could add some more to your point, you know. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, what about the transgender thing? I just found out Sandra Bullock is a man and loads of other like Obama's wife is true. It's crazy. I'd get I stay away from all that stuff. Okay, that stuff's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> I mean that all that stuff is clickbait. Okay, these people are not men or women or whatever. They're give me a break. There's no proof of that. They just somebody just gets on camera one day and creates a clickbait video. That's all they do. I've seen some of that junk. Yep. Don't fall for you. Don't fall for you in that stuff. <laughs> yeah. I read the Septuagint was used in the KGB translation. Well, it was between the Testaments, the Old and the New Testament. Um, it was put in there for, you know, the historical quality, essentially. Or not qu historical quality, yeah. Just the, you know, I don't even know how you'd say that. The, uh, you know, just, just really, it was historical. So they put it in between. And um, the, the King James Bible, the authorized version, as, as it was properly called back then, was uh, basically just it was a compromise between high church anglican and puritan you know and um, so some of that extra stuff that was put in was taken out later on so uh all right ron here's the toughest question of the day you ready for it i think so it says anyone know what happened to the channel of heal and restore not really I don't. I haven't heard from her in a long time. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into you know specifics there. She was just living in a certain way that I disagreed with, and I confronted her on it, and she, you know, broke off fellowship with me, and and that's that. Um, I'm not going to. I'm. I'm just. You know, I, I don't feel right really going into a whole lot on that whole thing. Um, you know, the way I look at it is if she had come out and, and did some kind of drama queen thing and really made a big issue about me attacking her or whatever else. Well then, you know, I'd have had to tell more about details and things, but um, whether she saved or not, I have no idea. I, I you know, I don't know. I, I, I'm just, you know, like I said, you know, I'm just not going to uh, say much about that. Um. I take that back. I actually have a harder question for you. Let's explain easy believism, easy believism salvation. <laughs> well, uh, kind of one, depends two, three. That depends on when you're talking about it because it can change at any time. Yeah, that's true. You know, uh, one, two, three, repeat after me. Mm -hmm. Say this prayer. You know. Yep. Just acknowledge that you're saved. No. You know, it, just I'd just like to say something here to some of these trolls and things. You know, just how can you people even consider yourself to be saved? You know, right? The kind of stuff that you write, it's just, it, it's so odd to me. It, it, you know, again, I, it, 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 when you get to, when you get saved and, and you, you read, 
about you know the Lord and things, and you see how he marveled at people's unbelief. I, I marvel at these people's unbelief. I mean, my word, it just okay. You disagree with me. You disagree with Brother Jeremy. Go away. You know, in life, you know, you just prove that you're mentally ill. That's all you're doing. Yeah. I don't. What is a super cat? I keep seeing this thing. Could you do it? Yeah. What is that? What is that? I don't know. They aren't saved or salved. <laughs> yeah. Please explain angels and wings. Thank you. Uh, there's no such thing as any angels in the Bible with wings. That's why we say that. Um, cherubim and seraphim are different. Uh, and a different orders. A different order of angelic being, but they're not angels. Can you do a video exposing Bible flop box? I actually have one. Actually, Tim's got one on his channel if you want to go check it out. So, uh, AVBTM Evangelist Ministries videos, I guess that's how you say it. Just look up Super Christian, okay, and you'll find his channel. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I've tried to expose a guy and I can't get through a video. He's just so boring and dull. He made me, put, made me go to sleep. <laughs> I just said, I, the heck with this, I'm done. <laughs> what is Bible flop box? He's a uh, Hebrew Rudis, basically a Seventh-day Adventist type. He's like a hybrid of both. I think he's a hybrid artificial intelligence robot. I think so, too. When you watch him, he just seems like he's so automated, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh. Yeah, Tim, that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen an angel? <laughs> uh, I sure hope not. If I have, then I must be on something. Uh huh. No, nobody's seeing any angels today. Yeah. Unless they're, you know, devil possessed or something like that. Did you find a building for your ministry yet, Brian? No, we didn't. Right now, there's what most people do in northern Maine. When winter hits, you just kind of uh, survive it. You know, it's uh, we get a lot of snow here, so. You know, places that are for sale, a lot of times they, they aren't plowing the lanes and you get four or five feet of snow, you know, and it's kind of hard to get in there and uh, stuff. So, you know, most people don't even put their place for sale in the winter. So we're just right now trying to save the money and look for a place probably more towards spring. So my answer on that. Can we interpret visions and dreams like the prophet Joseph? No. I was going to tell you right now. No, we can't. Uh, they were, you know, prophets, you know, again, they were writing the Bible, basically. God's word, and God was giving it to the prophets, okay? There's no prophets today that can speak any words of the Lord. That's heresy. Don't believe any of that stuff. You know, the Bible says we have a more sure word of prophecy. Just be root. Just, just stay away from the whole dreams and visions and all the vision stuff. It's, it's, not, it's not the Lord. Yep, I agree totally with that. <laughs> I had a dream that tro all trolls go trolls go away. Yeah, <laughs> pretty nice. Uh, Brian actually has a teaching a video on spiritual warfare, so just go to his channel and check it out. Just go in there and search for it. And <laughs> Yeah, Saved by Grace 2014, Romans 11, verse 22. Do you think that verse is talking about if the Gentiles keep cursing the Jews, that God will take the Gentile right out of the way and start the time of Jacob's trouble? Yeah, I'm definitely leaning that way. Um, you know, I know um, Brian Harler did a video on that. And uh, I, I did a thing on eternal security years ago, and I mistakenly said I think that that could be somebody losing their salvation. And I, I spoke honestly. I'm 
for a believer in internal security, but I said, I honestly don't know. And I took that video down recently because it's just, I don't believe that way anymore. And, um, but yeah, I think it, I think it's definitely leaning towards the thing of, you know, Gentiles keep messing with the nation of Israel and the Lord's going to, you know, cut off his blessings, but also cut them off in the sense of church age, put them into the time yep. of Jacob's trouble. Yeah, I, I believe that's what's going on as well. Like, it, basically, they're messing with, uh, you know, messing with Israel, and also they're not continuing his goodness, continuing his goodness or otherwise thou shalt be cut off. And when that happens, God's going to go back dealing with the nation of Israel. If you want to know about it, I actually cover that chapter in my video I did last week on Joe Schimmel, the end times or the uh, falling away lie number, I guess it's number four, number three, whatever it was, about eternal security. Uh, go check it out. I actually talk about that in more detail. But yeah, basically Romans 11 is talking about when the church age ends, uh, the fullness of the Gentiles will be come in. And God goes back to deal with the nation of Israel. That's what's going on there. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the Gentiles as a whole, not individual believers. Yeah. And it's so interesting, too, if you actually read that chapter, it's like an order of events leading all the way up to that. You know, mm -hmm. like it started off with salvation coming to the Gentiles, you know, Israel becoming blind for the time being and then leading up to the fullness of the Gentiles. You know. Do pets go to heaven? Yeah. Um, well, no, because they can't you know, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. <laughs> um, as far as Martin Luther King Jr., I saw a question about him, you know, and whatever else. Yeah, the guy was just wicked. If if the world promotes you, if the world loves you, you're wicked. It's as simple as that. But yeah. you know, I mean, listen to his famous speech. You know, uh, the free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. And he and he says, you know, Protestants and Catholics coming together. Right in this in the speech, he was wicked. It uh, wasn't a good band. Do you know 35 craters on the moon are named after Jesuit scientists? So the Vatican controls astronomy and NASA. Absolutely. Absolutely agree with that. Because uh, they actually have a telescope called Lucifer, by the way. Mm -hmm. So the whole moon landing thing was a scam. You know, all everything about that was fake. Ah. <sighs> Does Robert Light have sound doctrine? No, he denies the Bible. I just want to say that right now. He also believes in sinless perfection. He's uh, one of uh, Jan Boschoff's little cronies. Mm, what about a military draft? Um, well, again, understanding if the government tells you that um, abortion is required, well, you don't do it. If they tell you that you know you have to turn your King James Bible, you don't do it. And um, as far as the thing of a, a draft is concerned, you got to understand that America is basically the uh, strong arm of the Vatican right now, and these wars of aggression are just they're stupid, they're ridiculous. They're, it's about oil, it's about drugs. Oil, again, is not just the stuff you're putting in your car. Oil is the petrochemical world. It's about the pharmaceutical industry. That's where they're making the big money. And they, you know, they combine that with, you know, they go to Afghanistan and they get the, the opium from the poppy plants over there. And then they combine that with the petrochemicals that they're getting from a lot of the other countries that they're invading and they're putting them together. And that's why there's such an epidemic of pills right now in this country. So to go and be part of that and, and you know, and half the time, they, you know, they are fighting in these wars and the soldiers are saying we're not even allowed to win, you know, yeah. you know just, it's, it's stupid, you know, so just no, don't even obey the draft thing. Um, yeah, the whole Jezebel spirit thing is not in the Bible. I'm going to do a video on that, a study on that. There's two spirits in the Bible, the Holy Spirit and the Antichrist spirit.
that Jezebel spirit thing comes from the charismatics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where is Satan right now, according to the Bible? Well, uh, if you read in Revelation chapter 2, I believe it is, in Pergamos, it says that's where Satan's seat is. Um, and also, he can also go to heaven as well and, be, and go before the throne. He goes before the throne and get an order of the Lord. Yep. But Satan does have a seat here, and I believe it's actually in the Vatican now. Mm -hmm. and he's going to give it to the Antichrist one day. Because yeah, if you actually study out the whole Pergamus thing, it was actually uh, old Babylon, and it moved. So now it's in the Vatican. So. Yeah. What is it now? Oh, somebody mentioned my name. I have a study on the unforgivable sin um, or unpardonable sin. Um, I think that's still on. Yeah, it is. It's a it's an audio sermon. Yeah. Can people today be possessed by unclean spirits? Well, if they're lost, yeah. Yeah. Uh, say people cannot because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. This is the temple of God. Yep. Yeah, it's a Bavarian flag back there. My ancestors, the Denlingers, Danklingers was the original there. They're from Bavaria. Acts 217, in the end times, men will see visions and dreams. It had, it had no dreams and but a lot of visions. Well, that verse is actually talking about in the tribulation time period. It's not for today. That's when... God will go back to the nation of Israel and give them signs. If you actually read the passage, the context of it, it's talking about right before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. That's not, we're not in that time yet. We're in the end days before the rapture happens. So, but we're not in the last seven years. So. Mm -hmm. Why does Jeremy have a Russian flag in his house? Because uh, my ancestor is Russian. That's why. No, that's not true, brother. Tell the truth. Come on. You're, you're, you've are been hired by Putin to infiltrate the Bible-believing movement. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just speak perfect English, you know. Yeah. <laughs> He's actually broad, broadcasting live from the Kremlin, so, you know. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, no, to tell you the truth, my family is ancestry of Russian, Ukrainian, and Scottish. So there you go. Uh, opinion of the Eastern Orthodoxy thing. Um, I've had different people say about, uh, you know, could you do some study on the Greek Orthodox system, Orthodox system in general? Um, again, it's one of those subjects I have not studied it. I don't have any experience with it. Um, I've had that as a request a lot, actually, and I just I do not know much about it. Quite frankly, I leave it up to other people. Earth is flat and not a planet. Amen. It's neither one. I agree with that one. Uh, nowhere in the Bible is the Earth called a planet. Nowhere. You won't find that scripture. Is Trump saved? No. <laughs> that was easy. Was easy. Uh, well, I don't know who Yeshua who is, but you know, what, what, who is Yeshua? Oh, I guess you're trying to say Yeshua. Um, I don't know who Yeshua is. Yeah, I, my favorite is Yahawashi. Yahawashi. Like, yeah. I always get out of the motorcycle dealership locally and ask them if they have a Yahawashi. 
Um, it always reminds me of a dirt bike or something. May I correct you? Is the catching away not the rapture? Brother, I know that, okay? I use the term rapture because that's what people are familiar with. Okay, a lot of new believers are not going to understand the catching away or the blessed hope. So I use the term rapture so people can understand that. You know, I I know. I get that all the time in the comments when I say rapture. Okay, I just want to make sure I, I put that out there as a disclaimer. I say rapture so people understand what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Does Reuben Israel produce good fruit with street preachers? I don't know that name, brother. Do you know that name? I don't know that name either. <laughs> uh, no, let me tell you about Reuben Israel. He's a sinless perfection, Baal worshiping devil. Okay, uh, he believes he's sinless, and his and his idol is himself. Okay, uh, if you know anything about the street preaching movement, they believe that the uh, fall of man. Does, did not taint mankind so therefore we can become sinless and that God doesn't know the future God's always learning you know it's a very very wicked movement very disgusting they're not saved not on your life uh, they can sit here and talk the talk and walk the walks all they want to on the streets but at the end of the day no they're they're lost um, yeah absolutely very profane man um, David Conlon asks, I have a question. I've seen too many videos of people saying the Bible is not the word of God. Can you clarify? Well, there's uh, two different usages of the word of God. There's a capital W, which appears seven times in the King James Bible. It's a re reference to Jesus Christ, the manifest word of God. But then there's the written word of God. And that's where you're going to get that kind of teaching. A lot of these you know, heretics will come out and they'll say, nowhere does the Bible call itself the written word of God or something like this. Uh, it's not true. Um, there's a whole lot of scriptures to talk about. Um, first John, uh, first John five thirteen, I think it is, um, talks about you know um, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Um, there's a whole lot of scriptures. Uh, take too long to go over all of them, but um, the Word of God is, you know. Two different ways to say it. Like I said, Jesus Christ is the manifest word. That's always a capital W. Lowercase W word is the written word. Um, what are your thoughts about John Ramirez's testimony? I actually have a video on John Ramirez. He's a just he's still a Satanist. Okay. And he said he went down to hell and met Satan. Okay, Satan's not in hell, first of all. Um, you know, and he had he had a dream and a vision about going to hell. Another problem. John Ramirez is still a false convert. Yeah, you gotta you gotta watch out for some of these people. I'm ex Illuminati. I'm ex this or that, or whatever Satanist things, because they'll appeal to your flesh, and you think, oh, secret hidden knowledge or whatever. You gotta watch out for yeah. that. No. Can you explain what happened with Noah and Ham and Canaan, or do a study, please? I guess he's talking about the curse of Canaan when you know. Cain saw his nakedness, his father's mm -hmm. nakedness. Ham did, yeah. Uh, the, there's yeah, different yeah. theories there. There's, there's a theory that, that Ham actually committed a sodomite act with his dad, Noah. And eh, eh, you're stretching it there. It doesn't say that. Um, you know, it just says he saw his nakedness, went out and told his brethren. You know, that's all. And, you know, uh, Japheth and Shem took a you know, sheet and put it on their shoulders and walk backwards and cover their dad. Uh, you know, and then it says about um, when Noah woke from his wine, he knew what his and knew what his son Ham did. He basically said, "Curse would be Canaan," um, and so they say so. He knew it, and therefore it meant it, uh, the sodomite act. And again, it doesn't say that. You're really stretching it. You know, and he cursed yeah. the seed. That that means that it was the seed that sinned. I, you know, Ruckman actually taught that, and I don't agree with that. You're stretching the scripture. It doesn't say that. You know, and if you look in the Old Testament, too, under, under the law, it was a sin to uncover the nakedness of a close relative. So, you know, that's all I believe happened there. Um. What does Paul mean if in by by if in you are saved if you keep in memory what I preached? Basically, you know, if you actually have 
been truly born again by the gospel, you know, then you're saved. You are saved. Okay. You can't lose your salvation. You don't have, there's nothing to hold on to. Uh, Jesus Christ paid the price. Um, that's, that's how I'd answer that. Do you think a Baptist preacher who preaches that you must pay tithes and offerings is saved? Well, depending on if they preach the right gospel or if yeah. they're just a money making hammer. You know, yep. Uh, yep. there's a lot of preachers that were that are very well meaning, but they were taught wrong in their seminary. Mm -hmm. So you got to watch out for that. Uh, if you read Hebrews 7 5, um, actually, I'll do it real quick. It says, and verily they, they that are of the sons of Levi, who receive the office of the priesthood, are commanded to take tithes of the people according to the law, okay? That is, of their brethren, that though they come out of the loins of Abraham. So what was the tithes for? It was to the people according to the law. Well, under that today. So if anybody's preaching tithes today, and they're trying to do it for money, and the tithes in the Old Testament were personal goods, too. It wasn't money. Yep. Um, uh, so many, so many comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do I think of Princeton's and Yale's Divinity School? Not, not a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> hooked up to liberal schools like that you know eh, I I don't think much about it yeah again you know I, I can't make any definitive statements because I haven't studied I haven't looked into what comes out of them or what they offer or what they say but you know come on hooked up to Yale or and Princeton yeah is the earth flat Yes and no. Okay, let me just put it that way. What do, I, what do I mean by that? Well, the Earth's not a flat disc like these, like Rob Skiba and all these idiots out there are teaching. You know, it's it's called dry land in the, in the Bible. Okay, that's just all I'm gonna say about that. It's not a, it's not described as a globe or anything like that. And somehow the Earth makes a circle. You know, a circle is not a globe. It's a two-dimensional object. And a sphere is a three-dimensional object. There's a big difference. That's kindergarten stuff. People try to use that verse in Isaiah 40, 22 to say the earth is a circle, meaning it's a globe. That's not what the verse says. This verse is a circle. Not A circle is not a globe. It's like a, a CD, for example. You know, I don't have a CD in front of me, but a CD is a circle. It's flat. Circle. question here is why does everyone judges the white throne will go to the lake of fire yeah i believe so absolutely there's no point in judging christians there we've already been judged by the judgment absolutely. Seat oh, brother <laughs> what does paul mean by we establish the law in romans 3 31 it means that as christians we establish the law of god we convict the world of sin that's what it means. It doesn't mean we keep the law or we just, we're law keeping Pharisees or anything like that. No, it just means that we are supposed to be the salt and light in this world. And we go out and preach the law of God to the sinner. That's what the law is for. Hey, JT. Yep. How you doing, brother? What even is this channel? That's a good question. <laughs> We're not really sure. Uh, how can we study the earth and the Bible and know what it is and can answer others? I actually have a video called the geocentric earth. Okay, I did it just a couple weeks ago. You can go look it up. Um, I'll, I'll tell you, we'll go through the scriptures and tell you what it is. 
I do not believe the earth is a sphere. No, I don't. Scripture doesn't teach that. Now, brother, hey brothers, have either of you heard of this new documentary, The American Gospel Christ Alone? It seems to be just another modern Christian documentary. I haven't. Have you heard anything about that? Nope. Don't know a thing about it. Yeah, I don't know anything about it. As far as Dave Hunt is concerned, I see there in the comment. Um, yeah, he put out some good stuff on the, the Catholic Church. I saw that. Uh, what was the. That a, a woman rides the beast, I think, was his book. But yeah, he wasn't a Bible believer. Um, so if you live in unrepentant sin, you lose your millennial inheritance. Uh, yeah, I mean, you'd also lose your life. You also lose a lot of things in this life as well. You know, I believe if you don't, if you just become useless as a Christian, it's not about the sin per se. It's about your service to the Lord. If you don't do anything as a Christian here, then, yeah, I think you will lose your inheritance. Absolutely. You know, you won't reign. You'll just be, you'll just kind of be there, you know. <laughs> you know, the Bible says we're supposed to suffer. If we suffer, we shall also, what, reign with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and real quick there, I, I didn't say if Dave Hunt was lost. I said he wasn't a Bible believer. Okay, whether he was lost or not, or saved or not, that's you know whatever. I haven't done enough study and whatever to see what all he preached. But um, <clears throat> answer your question, brother Matthew: Is it illegal for American doctors to suggest anything but pharmaceutical drugs? Um, well, no. Um, they can say things about natural health, but if they say it cures, that's when they get in trouble. Um, and you know, the average doctor hasn't been trained at all in, in even simple. I mean, they have a small course in nutrition, and that's about it. They really don't get much training in nutritional health. Um, so, and again, I mean, go to ProPublica.com, I think it is, or .org, and you can look up any doctor's name in your area or wherever, and you can look it up and see how much money they get from the pharmaceutical industry. So... Is the New Jerusalem a giant cube? <laughs> uh, from what I read in the Bible, it seems that way. Okay, from what way the Bible describes New Jerusalem. Is casting out demons a command that Jesus gave gave a different dispensation? Yes. Uh, the casting out of devils and whatever is the Bible word is devil, it's not demon. Demon's not a real word. But casting out of devils as uh, for the Jews is a sign, you know. Jesus requires sign according to 1 Corinthians 1.2. Yeah. Um, Ministry of Truth, what are what's your opinions on the scientific community, advances in science and science in general? I don't mean science uh, so falsely called, but true science. Do you think it has benefited or hampered mankind? Um, that's kind of a broad subject, but I would say a lot of what modern science is about is, is making money. Yeah. Quite frankly. Um, yeah, the computer is a scientific marvel, so to speak, because you can do a lot with it, but it it uh, makes people very dependent on technology, and you start to forget simple motor skills like adding and subtracting with a pencil and paper and uh, writing, handwriting and things like that, And um, you know, but there's huge amounts of money in it, and of course, you know, Pharma, the whole industry is, is all about money, and uh, you know, vehicles. And it's funny because as they, the more they advance technology-wise with building vehicles, um, the more these things are just almost impossible for anybody to work on. You know, it, you know I've talked to mechanics, and they say they got to constantly go through training just to fix modern vehicles. You know, it's, it's crazy. You know, so science nowadays. You know, I, I would definitely say about money. Um, someone asked you a question, uh, Brian. Have you changed your stance on the Earth since 2015? <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's it's just something I don't study, quite frankly. Um, you know, I can only cover so many different issues, and right. uh, 
part of what I've done in the last 10 years of my life has been to answer people's questions. And that has taken me into all kinds of different stuff. But, you know, there's just so many things I just, I just have to say, I'm sorry. I can't get into that. Although I get attacked so much, you know, on different issues. If I go flat earth or whatever else, you know, then it's going to be, you know, thousands of new videos against me or something. So whatever. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, other people do work on that and whatever else. And they talk, they discuss it. Brother Jeremy does. So you want to learn about that stuff, go. He'll tell you about it. Yeah. Like I said, I have a video on the geocentric earth and what the Bible says the earth is. Okay. So I don't believe it's flat like the New Agers believe, but I also don't believe it's a globe either. You know, it just says we're a, we're a body of land to eat water. That's what the Bible describes us as. So if you want more information on it, go check out my, uh, Go check out my channel, uh, Husky 384XP 2.0, and then look up Geocentric Earth. And then I go through all the scriptures and everything. Um, can you explain a little more about suffering for Christ? Okay, this is a good one. Um, well, it's not this thing where, like, you got to make yourself suffer like suffer like the Catholic. Did I just say suffer? Make yourself suffer? Okay. Uh, I guess I'm hungry. Anyway, um... <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's not this thing where, like, the Catholics, they make themselves suffer. They go out of their way to make themselves suffer. I remember being in the street preaching group or whatever. They would be on the beaches and stuff, and they would wear, like, these long sleeves and long pants, and it would be, like, 110 degrees outside. You know, that's not suffering for the Lord. You're just being an idiot at that point, okay? Um, suffering for the Lord is going to happen naturally, okay? You're going to get persecuted because of your faith. You just preach. You just preach to people, and you're gonna suffer. You know, you, you tell your family. You know, you try to witness to your family, uh, and they're gonna reject you. That's suffering for the Lord. Everybody's gonna turn against you. That's suffering. You're gonna have constant headaches. You know, uh, your body's just gonna fail you. It seems like a lot of times. You know, you're gonna have weird dreams. You're not gonna sleep very well. Um, I mean, you're gonna have. You're gonna get sick sometimes. I mean. Now, there's many things that can happen. It's just going to happen naturally. And the people that are lost, usually usually I see it happening in workplaces a lot of times too. People that are lost will actually persecute you even though they don't know that you're a Christian. I've seen that happen before. It's happened to me. You know, I'll get persecuted for no reason at all. You know, they don't even know that I'm a Christian. And I believe what it is is spirits actually telling them, hey, he's different. You know, so just suffering in this life you know you're gonna have a miserable life i mean there's times we'll have joy sure there's times i have joy in the lord but it's not easy it's not easy living here as a christian we got all things against us you know so that's how i answer that you just yep. live right you just live right live holy you'll suffer for the lord well we should probably stop this broadcast thing for now <laughs> yeah i'm getting a lot of questions now i don't know if we should even announce the live stream thing on the dispensational thing it's gonna be probably about five thousand new trolls come along <laughs> the troll army <laughs> 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 uh let's see if i do i'll do one more question let's see um Well, are we supposed to heal ourselves through prayer and fasting and God natural plants fruit plants fruits or depend on these non-believing doctors? How can we heal ourselves? Uh, just trust in the Lord. That's what I do. I mean, plus there's plenty of things, you know, natural remedies and stuff that you can do. Um, you got to just really research that whole thing out. I mean, I, I've looked into it somewhat. I don't know what we're smiling about. I'm missing something. Contrary. Said about she's gonna probably need a new mouse from click you know blocking all these trolls <laughs> yeah you know the best way to not worry about getting sick just try to live live as right as you can you know continue to stay fessed up before the lord you know don't compromise and god will keep you healthy i promise i rarely ever get sick because of that 
you know, and do I stumble occasionally? Yeah, there's times I'll let out a curse word, you know, I'll get mad or whatever, and I'll smash my hand and I'll, it'll slip out of my mouth. That happens to anybody, you know. You know, James chapter three says the tongue is the hardest thing to control. So um, there's times we all slip up, we all stumble, you know, but um, not perfect by any means. But I just make sure I say before I go to bed every night, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. You know, I'm sorry about those evil thoughts I had about a certain individual or whatever, you know, whatever it may be. I'm sorry I watched, I spent too much time goofing off today or whatever, you know, whatever it is. Just make sure you acknowledge it and stay fessed up and, and God will establish you. God will keep you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, um, all right. Well, we're going to have to end this thing because it's not going to end unless we do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was fun, guys. I'm yeah. glad to be on with you guys. It was. It was fun. I appreciate everybody and even the enemies. Came up with some decent questions there. At least before you were blocked, then you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I have to save the questions for some other time here. There's a bunch of other ones came up there, but we gotta stop. That's just a yeah, test. Okay. This is so. test video. It ended up being a two hour or an hour long uh, <laughs> Q and A. That's good, though. I mean, the brethren need it sometimes. Yep. So, I got one question for you, brother. Okay. Uh, Matthew, I think it's Matthew. This is one verse I cannot seem to get a hold of. It's Matthew, I think it's 18, where it says the binding and loosing in heaven will be binding and loose on the earth. What does that mean? That is one verse I cannot seem to figure out. And people are going to laugh at me. Like, Time oh. to go. See you around. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, that's that's a, that's a that's a rough one. Yeah, it is a rough one. It's without getting into a whole lot of stuff there. I think it's mostly just a thing of you know the priesthood of the believer. Um, you know, being able to tell somebody, you know, the thing of judgment. They wouldn't have had perfect judgment because they weren't. You know, Jesus said to Peter at one point, he said, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. You know, they were yeah. they weren't really they were saved in the sense of what they were supposed to be doing at that time. But they weren't converted, um, right. they weren't, you know, in Christ yet. They didn't have the right. Holy Spirit yet. So they were going to be able to judge on a higher level. And I've seen this thing where you get people that are wicked and whatever else and you, and you rebuke them with scripture and you say, you know, you're not right with God. You got it right, whatever. And God will bring judgment on that person. So, kind of a thing of there's that spiritual judgment bring upon somebody as a as a believer. Without getting into a whole big thing on that. Right. Okay. I was always read over that, and I was never really understood that. You know, it's just like it's one of those verses that it just eludes me. You know. Yeah. So, okay, well, we're going to sign out here. Got to get going. So, so yeah, you just, all you got to do is just hit stop broadcast, and that's it. Or hit the uh, little phone button at the top. I guess I, I don't know if you have that at the top or not. But A little, okay. I'll just do the stop broadcast thing. That'll work. So, so I don't remember. All right, we'll see everybody. I guess it's going to be Saturday night. We're going to do the uh, um, debunking the dispensational. What's what's it called? Dispensation of heresy or something? Uh, I don't know. It was something, I guess, the anti-dispensationalist or something like that. I don't know. Just come up with some word for it. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I don't even know. What, what time do you usually start it on Saturday night? Uh, I start it, well, since you... Um, We'll start an hour earlier than normal because I I know you like to go to bed a little earlier than I do. So uh, mm -hmm. we can start around seven your time. Would that be good? We'll go for about two hours. Yeah, I think so. Okay, this would work. Okay, well, then we'll see everybody on Saturday Saturday night.
Okay. Absolutely. I'll, you know, I'll make a video or something telling the official thing and whatever else too. So yeah. All right. See everybody later.